Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Paolo Stocchi, and uh, I work at ICTP, the Earth System Physics section. And uh, my presentation uh, is on the ICTP regional thermal model response in convection permitting mode over different regions of the world. Firstly, um, <clears throat> an introduction about the importance of convection. Uh, convection is uh, of high interest for atmospheric scientists, climate impact researchers, and for the public in general due to the role that plays in driving damaging extreme events. It's also the dominant type of precipitation in many parts of the world and influences the general circulation of the atmosphere. Unfortunately, this important phenomena is parameterized at uh, the grid spacing of uh, most of global and regional common models. And it's well known that it's one of the main sources of error for climates, a uh, projection. But recently, thanks to the improvements in terms of uh, computer capacity and model development, it was possible to work also in climate activities, in convection permitting, and uh, different projects uh, born. Here I have reported some examples, two important projects from CORDEX, flagship pilot studies. One focus on uh, in the Euro-Mediterranean area, another one is focused uh, in the eastern part of the Africa, specifically over the Lake Victoria. And uh, another important project is uh, an European project called UCP, European Climate Prediction System. The main goal of this uh, project can be summarized in these three points, which are the reduction of model error associated with uh, parameterized convection, a more detailed representation of present convection phenomena, and uh, the necessity to investigate how the convection phenomena responsible for damaging events will change in the future. We are part with RAGSIAM of this project. Uh, RAGSIAM is a regional climate model, uh, initially developed here uh, at Anchor, but now is fully supported at uh, ICTP. I have reported some characteristics in terms of physical parameterization, and uh, recently has been developed a non hydrostatical core in order to work with RAGSIAM in convection permitting. And <clears throat> the purpose of this work was to test the new non hydrostatic core trying to reproduce the convection explicitly at convection permitted scale over different regions of the world, simulating different heavy precipitation events. So we test the model over the USA domain, performing two simulations, one in the eastern Texas, another one in California. We also test the model in the Africa domain, performing a simulation over the Lake Victoria. And we also test the model in Europe, performing different uh, events. Um, <clears throat> the first case I'm going to present is uh, the North California case, which happened between 60 and 80 February 2004. This event was characterized by a storm strikes, which um, struck the North California and determined heavy precipitation in the coastal area. This event feed the, 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 the runoff of the Russian River, which flowed in the Garneville area. Here we have reported a picture of this flood. And here we have a satellite image of the <coughs> long scale, large scale uh, forcing which driven this event, which is represented by um, an atmospheric river, which is usually associated to this kind of events in this area. For this event, we consider different observational data sets. Uh, here I have reported the 96 early accumulated precipitation from TRIM plus CHIRTS. Uh, TRIM is based on a satellite uh, measurements. CHIRPS is based on um, a mix between satellite imaginary and uh, in situ measurements. PRISM is uh, <coughs> based on in situ uh, measurements and NSAP stage for analysis, which is an analysis which assimilates rain gauges and uh, <coughs> radar. What about the model results? Here we have always the 96 early accumulated precipitation. Here we have observation. In this plot, we have the RAGSIAM simulation at 12 kilometer, which uh, was used like boundary condition and uh, <coughs> in, in initial condition for the convection permitting simulation at the 3 kilometer. As you can see, the, co the simulation at 12 kilometers under heavily underestimates the event, while the convection permitting simulation is able to, to reproduce better the, the events, in particular uh, the maximum over the mountain, the coastal mountain, but show also a tendency to overestimate the precipitation, in particular over the sea. 
Here we have um, temporal TS of the six early precipitation for this period averaged over this area. Uh, in black line, we have the observation. The red line uh, is the convection permitting uh, um, simulation. Blue line is the 12 kilometers uh, simulation. As you can see, the model is able to reproduce the temporal evolution of the events. Uh, and the convection permitting simulation is also able to uh, reproduce the maximum, the intensity of the maximum, with a tendency to overestimate the second, the second one. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, the second case is uh, the Northeastern Texas case, which happened between 9 and 11 June 2010. This event was characterized by a low level flow which transports moisture across the Northeastern Texas, where we had the maximum precipitation. Also, for this event, we consider different uh, observational data set CHIRPS, PRISM, and uh, the ANSAP analysis. Also for this event, the, the observational data set show similar results. Uh, CHIRPS mm, underestimates the precipitation in this part of the domain. The, the model results uh, show that, like the previous uh, one, uh, here we have uh, the observation. Here we have the rain train forecast, which was used uh, like boundaries and initial in this case. Here we have the convection permitting simulation. Also, the previous uh, run, uh, um, the convection permitting uh, simulation is able to, to reproduce, um, we can say, well, the, the observation, in particular the, the Northeastern Texas case, and show also a tendency to uh, simulate a precipitation in this part of the domain which is not detected by the observation. Uh, what about the temporal series uh, uh, calculated, uh, averaged over this area? Uh, also, in this case, the model is able to reproduce temporal yield events, and in convection permitting simulation, is able to reproduce also the intensity of the maximum here. We test also the model in Africa. Uh, we focus on over the Lake Victoria Basin. Uh, Lake Victoria could, could be really stormy at night, caused to the typical uh, breeze circulation, which is uh, forced by the lake and the surrounding mountain. And it's estimated that each year, three to five uh, uh, thousand fishermen perish on the lake due, the, due to the night storms. For this event, we consider three observational data sets uh, here on the top of the slide, twin, CMOS, and CHIRPS. Just to show that for this case, the data set uh, doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't show similar results. Stream um, show a maximum in this part of the Lake Victoria and in the south part. CMORF uh, is able to detect this maximum like stream, uh, and, but also show a maximum in this part of the domain which is not detected by stream. And CHIRPS uh, mm, doesn't show any maximum over the lake and show a maximum here, which is not detected by the other two ones. It's just to say that we had some problem to compare the model results with observation in this case. On the bottom, we have the model results. Here we have the simulation at 12 kilometers, uh, which, like the previous cases, underestimates the event. And the convection permitting the simulation show better results in terms of precipitation uh, if compared with CMORF, but obviously show difference in respect to the trim and chips. For this event, we also try to uh, understand if the model was able to reproduce the typical uh, light breeze circulation, which is characterized by intense precipitation uh, and convection during the day over the mountain and during the night over the lake. So we consider a cross-section in this position. And from this cross-section, we consider the mass fraction of cloudy liquid water, uh, represented by the green shaded color. And with the black line, we have the vertical velocity of the wind. And as you can see, the model is able to reproduce during the day the, the convection over the mountain and during the night over the lake. Uh, the last case, the last, the last domain we, perform, we, we test is the European uh, domain. We perform three simulations uh, of three different cases, IOP60, FERN, and Austria. 
this domain and these three cases are part of a bigger project called Eurocardex SPS in convection permitting, which will be presented by Stefan Cebolowski on Thursday. So I will be fast to show the results, and I will show just the results for Ragsian. Here I have reported the, the precipitation accumulated over the period. On the top, we have the observation. On the bottom, we have the RAGCM uh, simulation results in convection permitting. For the first case, the LP60, uh, this event interests mainly three areas, in particular uh, two areas in the south of France and one in, in Italy, in Liguria. The model is able to, to reproduce the maximum position but show a tendency to underestimate the event over the Ligurian area. Uh, for the second case, the third case, which is an orographic uh, precipitation event which interests the south of Alps in Switzerland, um, <coughs> the model is able to reproduce pretty well the old event, catching the maximum in this part of the domain. While for the third case, the Austria case, uh, uh, which is always an orographic precipitation event which interests the north flank of the Alps, the model in this case show bigger difficulties uh, and uh, under, underestimates all the events over the domain. For this domain, we also perform some longer simulation. We, at the moment, uh, perform two years of simulation, 1999-2000. We perform a simulation at 12 kilometers in order to produce the boundary condition and the initial condition for uh, the convection permitting simulation over this domain, highlighted by the red square. And some results from this run. In this uh, slide, we have the seasonal mean precipitation for winter, for 2000. On the right side of the slide, we have two data set, observational data set, EOPS, at uh, 25 kilometers of resolution. On the bottom, we have an high resolution data set. On the left side, we have the model results. Um, here we have uh, the 12 kilometers uh, simulation. Here we have the convection permitting simulation for uh, this variable. And as you can see, the model in convection permitting uh, doesn't seem to, to give a clear added value um, comparing to the simulation 12 kilometers. Reproduced better, for example, this maximum. It's also able to reproduce better the lower value of the, the precipitation, but show a uh, wetter bias with respect to the RAGCM at 12 kilometers. For the summer season, um, we obtain a better result in convection permitting simulation. The model is able to reproduce better the precipitation over the mountain, but also in this part of the domain, reduce the wet bias uh, simulated by the 12 kilometers of uh, simulation. Uh, in summary, uh, different type of heavy precipitation events simulated with drug CM at convection permitting uh, uh, were compared with in situ and satellite based observation. The goal of this work was to evaluate the performance of the state of the art of the regional convection permitting climate model in different regions of the world. Preliminary results uh, show that um, the model is, is able to represent the precipitation events in terms of intensity and spatial distribution, uh, although the model performance can vary uh, according to the nature of the events. And another important thing to underline, uh, as we've seen uh, uh, to the Africa case, the observation uncertainty play a really big role at, at this kind of resolution, and uh, it's really important to, to work with uh, adequated observational network in order to have um, good uh, validation of the model. Uh, thank you for your attention.